Okay, welcome back. We are going to continue our muscle lecture with uh, understanding what takes place with the contraction and relaxation of muscles and that sliding muscle filament theory, which is really just the interaction of actin and myosin. So myosin and those myosin heads are going to pull on actin. And that's going to cause the thin filament, remember the thin filament is actin, to slide inward so that H zone gets much smaller. So thanks to the structural proteins, there is transmission of force throughout the entire muscle, resulting in a whole muscle contraction. Okay. So let's take a look at the contraction cycle. What we're looking at here in purple right? Purple is going to be at the myosin, same thing down here. Purple is myosin. We see that that's the thick filament. And then the actin, which is looks like the green centipede up there, that's going to be the thin filament. We see the actin is thin and the myosin is thick. Now, when the two interact, when the binding sites are exposed, which we see on the top left here, we see the binding sites are exposed. That's because calcium came in. Calcium had an impact on troponin and tropomyosin, making the binding sites open so that a cross bridge can be formed. So the myosin head made contact right there at the binding site. Now notice what we have hanging out here in the wind. We have ADP, so here's adenosine, and attached to it, we have two phosphates. That's ADP. That's ADP. But right next to it is another phosphate, okay? That phosphate is typically referred to as creatine phosphate, okay? It's available energy that's ready to be used, okay? But they're just hanging out next to each other. Now, the hinge right here bent. When that hinge bent, it created a power stroke. And it releases that ADP and that phosphate. When it releases them, the creatine goes bye-bye, and this phosphate joins. And now, on the bottom left in D, we get ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And you see what happens with the ATP? The ATP attaches to the myosin, and the myosin head detaches. There's no more contact here. There's the gap. So... This is what happens when someone is killed or someone dies, right? And they, let's say, watching an episode of CSI Miami or CSI New York, right? Or crime scene investigation or something, and they find a body. The body's in the shortened, contracted state. The fingers are flexed, the elbows are flexed, they're in this shortened position. And that's because their myosin heads never detached. So their body stayed in the shortened, contracted state. Now, only in living beings can you make ATP. So rigor mortis is that shortened, contracted state due to the dead person not being able to generate ATP to allow the myosin heads to detach. When it's still attached, that's what rigor mortis is. Okay, so we're going to be talking a little bit about ADP and ATP and creatine phosphate uh, real shortly. But you need ATP specifically for the detachment to take place. And once it detaches, look what happens to the ATP. It goes back to ADP and creatine phosphate once again. So how do muscles derive the ATP that's necessary to power the contraction cycle? Well, one of them is CP which is creatine phosphate. Another is called anaerobic glycolysis. When something's anaerobic, we don't need oxygen available. And then we have cellular respiration, which is aerobic 
respiration. So with creatine phosphate, there's an enzyme called creatine kinase, right? Anything with ACE is an enzyme. And creatine kinase can catalyze the transfer of a phosphate group from CP to ADP quickly. Now, the body doesn't like to keep ATP and lots of ATP around in storage. It just doesn't like it. So what it does instead is it can remove one of these terminal phosphates. And when you remove one phosphate from three, you get two. You get ADP, adenosine diphosphate. And that third phosphate now becomes creatine phosphate. Okay. And the enzyme needed to do that was CK, creatine kinase. Sometimes they call it CPK, creatine phosphokinase. They're interchangeable. Now, creatine, phosph creatine phosphokinase or creatine kinase can act over here as well, taking this phosphate back, combining it with ADP. Right, these two can join up, and now the, this phosphate group from creatine phosphate joins ADP, and you end up with three phosphates again adenosine triphosphate. And then creatine lost its phosphate, so it's just creatine. So this cycle can go on over and over and over again, but it's short. This creatine phosphate is used up very quickly, it's like you needed for let's say a quick power lift or a quick deadlift when you need fast burst and of energy it's uh creatine that's involved or creatine phosphokinase which is the enzyme that is involved so this is one place we can get energy is from creatine phosphokinase it's very fast burst of energy the second place we can get it from is anaerobic glycolysis which is here this is number two now, glucose, all glucose is, is a six carbon sugar, right? You got one, two, three, four, five. A six carbon sugar is called glucose. And when you take that six carbon sugar and we break it right down the center, you end up with pyruvic acid, which looks like this. Right, you broke this bond and this bond. Now it's just two, three carbon sugars. It's separated. Okay, you broke this bond here in the center and you end up with pyruvate or pyruvic acid. When you break or split apart glucose from a six carbon sugar to two, three carbon sugars, we call it glycolysis. Lysis means to split or to break apart. You're, what are you splitting? Glucose. Now, some ATP is made from that. Not a lot, but some is made from anaerobic respiration. No oxygen is required or available to do this. And it also takes place not in the mitochondria. It takes place in the cytosol or the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, if oxygen is available, pyruvic acid can now enter the mitochondria for the Krebs cycle and for the electron transport chain, sometimes called the ETC, the electron transport chain. The Krebs cycle takes a lot of B vitamins, especially B1, B2, and B3. It takes a lot of B vitamins, and it's going to be giving off a lot of CO2, carbon dioxide. That's why it's called cellular respiration. We're breathing in oxygen, and we're giving off CO2. The Krebs cycle also produces ATP, and it gives off carbon dioxide, and it creates the chemical energy or coenzymes needed for the electron transport chain to take place, and that's what's gonna make lots of ATP. The electron transport chain needs iron. So I'll put Fe for iron. And it needs CoQ10. 
coenzyme Q10. Now, this is why when you are iron deficiency anemia or a woman's on her menses and she's losing blood, you may not have enough energy because you're losing iron. Okay, and if you're deficient in CoQ10, which happens to a lot of people on statin drugs or cholesterol medication, also that's going to impair mitochondrial, the mitochondria in producing proper ATP. So you need your B vitamins for the Krebs cycle and you need iron and CoQ10 and a few other important uh, essential vitamins and minerals for the electron transport chain. So where are we getting energy? We're getting it from creatine kinase, which is a short burst of energy. You get it from anaerobic respiration, which is glycolysis, which is breaking down glucose to pyruvic acid. If oxygen is available, pyruvic acid can enter the mitochondria for the Krebs cycle and ETC. If oxygen is not available, this does not take place. Meaning if you are exercising and you're out of breath and you're huffing and puffing, pyruvic acid becomes lactic acid. Lactic acid, which is another type of sugar. Okay. I'm going to talk about cholesterol synthesis. Let me just